This video is for anyone in Palestine or adjoining countries who is worried about Israeli drones. What the buzzing sound is, why they're making it so obscenely loud, and what I would do if I was a journalist operating in that region in order to protect myself. First of all, I was in the 75th Ranger Regiment, which is a unit within the United States Special Operations Community, so I spent the most formative years of my life constantly exposed to the unfortunate reality of drone and kinetic strike targeting methodology. As a side note, this is also how I know the IDF isn't primarily targeting Hamas or Islamic Jihad. The one notable exception being the recent missile strike in Beirut. Let's get into it. First, the buzzing. The buzzing comes from the propeller system located at the rear of the aircraft. In one way that rotary or propeller aircraft can increase or decrease the noise from the propeller system is to either increase or decrease the RPM, the revolutions per minute, of the propeller itself so the slower it's going around the quieter it is another way is to widen the flight path of the drone's orbits so drones can carry missiles and bombs but they are primarily a surveillance platform and if a drone is tracking you you will be at the center of the circle it is flying around you i.e the drone's orbit if they wanted to reduce the noise all they would have to do is widen the drone's orbit in order to put more distance between you and the drone's propeller. So it's standard US policy not to be seen or heard if at all possible. So historically we go for as wide an orbit as possible and only bring it in tight for considerations such as weather patterns, cloud cover, obscuring mountain ranges, etc. But since Israel doesn't even try to hide the fact that they are a terror state, they maintain absurdly tight orbits. This video from the other day, I have never heard such an incredibly loud drone. Some of my other veteran buddies and I were discussing it, and for all we know, Israel has, you're using their own models of drones, and they've designed them to be intentionally and ridiculously loud. Or maybe they just hooked up a Bluetooth speaker. I don't know. At this point, I wouldn't even be surprised. In Surveillance 101, this is called aggressive surveillance, and it is a known state tactic to follow people aggressively and let them know they are being watched. The threat of future violence is implicit in this surveillance stance, and this stance is meant for the people of Gaza, the civilians, in order to wear you down, scare you, make you feel hopeless enough to stop resisting. It's actually counterproductive from a military perspective because Hamas fighters are not gonna go outside and into the open when they can hear a drone. I wouldn't because the second a Reaper drone spotted me maneuvering through the rubble, I know I'm done. It's freaking game over. It's almost like none of this is about Hamas. This next part is for the journalists. So they have your cell phone information. Every time your cell phone is on, an AI is tracking your location and activity and is most likely doing the same for everybody in your contact list. When I was in the military, humans were still doing most of the legwork, but now everything's largely automated. And for all we know, their AI targeting system, the gospel, is determining and authorizing these strikes with no human oversight, which seems insane, but at this point, I also wouldn't even be surprised. Ideally, what you want is a disposable burner phone, which would allow you to remove the battery. But if you're a journalist, you need a smartphone to do your job in the modern era. And you can't just remove the battery at a smartphone. Turning it off won't do the trick because they can turn your phone back on to get a signal on you. So what I'd recommend doing is get onto YouTube and watch videos on how to construct your own Faraday cage, which will block electromagnetic signals so that your phone cannot be accessed remotely. I don't know what materials you have access to at the moment, but I'd watch some of these crazy American doomsday preppers because they know what's up. And they're building these cages to prevent their electronics from getting fried by a North Korean EMP device, but it'll serve your purposes just as well. Then I'd test it in a place with good cell service and get some of my friends to call me. And if you don't get any notifications, then it probably mostly works, which is better than nothing. Now, a lot of the bombings and strikes are happening mostly at night just because it's scarier. So I would put your phone into the Faraday cage in a completely separate location from where you will sleep because they will have your last known location before the signal disappears. And I would also suggest randomizing those locations and the locations where you take the phone out of the cage. Let their AI system try to figure that out. That's the basic stuff I won't go to like jail for saying. Uh, if you want procedures for how you can contact people when your phone is in the cage, <coughs> telegram. 
And for the rest of y'all, I recommend following these journalists and interact with their posts because the IOF monitors their pages for analytics and engagement, and they finally started to attempt to mitigate information blowback. Long story short, the bigger the accounts are, the safer they are. Questions in the comments, please do not remix this post, share it, share it to stories, download it, but I'm deleting it in a few hours. Hope this helps. See you in the next one.